we've always overcompensated. You know, we, we rarely land on the foundations. When you look at the denominations, and you've been following this stuff much more precisely than I have, is it is it even an accurate question to ask what happened to these denominations that were at what point stalwarts? You know, Reformed churches, for example, the Presbyterian church, whatever, the Anglican community, they were pretty good. Sure, they had some excesses, but so do evangelicals. In the main, though, it was focused on scripture. But the shift, is it just the cultural pressure? Is it the seminary's failure? Is it all the above? Help me. I think it's all of the above, but I also think if we're using the Word of God as our roadmap, it's to be expected. You know, you and I have talked about this. I think most people watching, listening to us right now, realize that we are in a rapid cultural decay. I remember Judge Robert Bork wrote a wonderful book years and years and years ago called Slouching Toward Gomorrah. If he were alive today, he'd have to say that the title of the book is Racing Toward Gomorrah. I mean, I, I realize that the older you get, the faster time flies. But in my world, from my perspective, we are decompensating at a breakneck speed. I mean, 10, 15 years, we are seeing things we've never seen before. So if we're watching all of this cultural decay, why would we think that somehow it wouldn't work its way into the church? Ah, there's the word of God again. You go to 2 Thessalonians, you go to Matthew 24, Jesus gives that Olivet Discount, one of his longest presentations, and he talks about the six things we should be particularly looking for as we're looking at our watch, waiting for his return. They're going to happen. Four of them affect the church. And one of them is this rising apostasy. Now, Jesus was telling telling his truth. And he said, all of this has to happen before he comes. You and I don't know. Nobody knows. Only the Father knows. But I'll tell you, if you're paying attention like a good farmer, like scripture tells us to, you're looking at the storm cloud. And there are storm clouds gathering around. So if we're seeing all this cultural decay, why would we think that apostasy and heresy wouldn't be on the rise? And when we read in Second Thessalonians about the great falling away, why would we think that isn't happening right now? So yes, there's all kinds of junk happening in the culture. But are we beginning to see, those of us who are listening with the ears in our heart and watching with discerning eyes, are we beginning to see the great falling away? When I was a kid and I came to faith in Christ, the verse that scared me more than any other verse in scripture was this, even the righteous will be deceived. And I panicked and I used to cry literally before the Lord and say, Jesus, if you're in my heart, I don't know how, because I now have your imputed righteousness, probably didn't use that word at the time, but that idea that I became whole and clean because of him, would I be deceived? And I that has been for the rest of my life a watchword. Lord, watch me, check me, poke me, if I'm off, if I'm moving away, I don't ever want to be deceived. And I think what we're seeing in these churches is deception. Apparently, we have forgotten the whole concept of sin. And therein lies the fact that we are, oh, those absolute knee-jerk, right-wing reactionary, homophobic members of the religious right. So I look this up. I'm a lover of words. Fundamentalist, okay? Because the language is everything here. Fundamentalist is defined by Webster as a person who believes in the strict, literal interpretation of scripture in a religion. Now, I find that interesting. Okay, so yes, I am a religious fundamentalist. I have no problems with that whatsoever. And if you look at the word, it means going back to the root. I don't ever want to abandon the root. I want to stay in the root of the word. If you look at the word evangelical, this is fascinating. Of or according to the teachings of the gospel of the Christian religion. It's a little mushy the minute you go from fundamentalist to evangelical. If you go to Google and you decide to search the word evangelical, and by the way, 94% of people who go to Google never go to the second page. Even if there's 10 pages, every single story on evangelical Evangelical under news for Google is politics, 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 politics. So people are shying away from using the word evangelical because now it's synchronistically tied to the fact that it has to be a political position or it's a voting block. So we don't even know what to call ourselves anymore. If we don't even know how to identify ourselves as daughters and sons of the Most High King, living epistles, ambassadors who, who should never be ashamed, people who cannot stop talking about that which they've seen and heard, no wonder we're getting mushy in the churches. So I think, I don't know when he's coming, but I'll tell you what, I got my bags packed. I'm ready any single day now. But if we're watching this falling away, I'm thinking, oh, man, this is that my mom used to call it setting the stage. She said, Jesus is going to set the stage before he comes. And I feel like all of the props and this furniture are being set on the stage and things are happening now. I don't know when, could be tomorrow, could be a hundred years from now, but I'm watching thinking, if you look at prophecy, all the major prophecies have been fulfilled. We're watching this idea of the decay in the culture, apostasy in the church, the uptick of heresy. I don't know. Even so, come Lord Jesus. I, I hope I miss dinner tonight. I don't know what'll happen, but I'm ready.